Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Larry Smith. I'm the Dean of the Medical School, and I'm here to welcome all of you to our seventh White Coat Ceremony. Now, it's hard to frame exactly what the white coat ceremony is in the continuum of going from a college student to a physician. So I would say this is a ceremony welcoming the students to the profession of medicine and acknowledging the beginning of the beginning. Graduation from medical school, I would say, is the end of the beginning. And then you have residency training, which is the middle. <laughs> and then fellowship training, which is the end of the beginning completely, and then practice for a few years before you retire because you're deep into middle age by the time you finish all of those steps. <laughs> but this is a very special day because it is an acknowledgement that medical students are part of the profession of medicine with the expectations that they gradually take on a new identity, the identity of physician. And in acknowledging that, the Gold Foundation, not that many years ago, started this process of the White Coat Ceremony. And it is, my guess is it is at almost every medical school in the country today. Uh, many of the advanced practice nursing schools, uh, and it is really something that has become an acknowledgement in a tough world of practicing medicine that we are here for a special purpose, and that purpose is the patients. And so, Today, I welcome all of you, and let me introduce the people who are going to participate in today's event. Dr. Dave Battinelli, Dean for Medical Education, will give the introduction. And then, a very important person for this class, Dr. Rona Waldenberg, the Dean of Admissions, who will read the names. Two people who will attempt to smoothly get these white coats on your bodies uh, without any muss or fuss, uh, Dr. Samara Ginsberg and Dr. David Elkowitz. And to give out the pins for both the Gold Society, Gold Humanism Society, as well as the pin for the EMT certification, Vincent Popsidaro. Okay. Good afternoon. On behalf of the entire faculty of the School of Medicine and the leadership of Hofstra University and the Northwell Health System, let me also welcome you to our white coat ceremony for this, the seventh incoming class of the School of Medicine. While this is not the inaugural class or the first class, it is in fact the inaugural or first class of the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine. They deserve a round of applause. I'm humbled and honored to have the opportunity to address the inaugural class of outstanding students and all those significant others who have joined us here today to support them and acknowledge the beginning of their journey into the profession of medicine. I'll spend a few minutes today describing first the origins of the white coat ceremony as Dr. Smith started, and next why we choose to conduct this ceremony at this time in the academic year. So as stated at first, the white coat ceremony, it's a relatively new ritual uh, that in fact is not in just some medical schools, but most medical schools, that marks the student's transition from the study of preclinical to clinical health sciences. At some schools where students begin meeting patients early in their education, the white coat ceremony is held, in fact, before the very first year begins on the very first days of school. <clears throat> this white coat ceremony typically involves a formal robing or cloaking of students in white coats the guard physicians have traditionally worn for over 100 years. Many other health professions have adopted and similarly have adopted white coat ceremonies. The cloaking of the white coat is referred to as the mantle of this medical profession. The modern white coat ceremony, as envisioned and initiated by Dr. Arnold Gold in 1993, welcomes those embarking on their medical careers to the community of physicians by giving them this powerful symbol of compassion and honor. And most importantly, it gives them the standard against which they must measure every act of care to the patients who trust them. I'd like to take a few moments to acknowledge the work of the Gold Foundation. 
As stated in 1993, Dr. Arnold Gold, the pediatric neurologist at the Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons, and his wife, Sandra, began the foundation whose mission is to promote humanism in medicine. <clears throat> well, they have many incredible programs and initiatives, the one that gained the most traction is the formal white coat ceremony. In fact, it is not some, but almost all medical schools with over 15,000 medical students in the US and abroad having this ceremony. 10 years ago, when I first came to Northwell, having known Sandra and Arnold from work that we did nationally and worked together in Boston, I contacted the foundation well before we had a medical school to inquire whether they would allow us as a health system to start a gold humanism chapter, as we all thought it was critical to help promote humanism in patient-centered care. It said on their website that they worked with medical schools and hospitals. Well, we were not at that time of school, as stated, but we certainly were more than a single hospital. But the Gold Foundation had never been approached by just a teaching hospital and not a medical school. And after a couple of months of negotiating, I think they simply just changed their website and came back and said, you know, see us when you're a medical school. So we did. And I'm happy to report that now teaching hospitals are, in fact, recognized by the Gold Foundation. All joking aside, Sandra and Arnold have been incredibly supportive, and we have been in constant communication since the earliest days of the development. And in fact, Sandra has called several times to send her regards and regrets that she and Arnold could not be here today. Without their vision and support, most medical schools would have very little formal way of acknowledging and rewarding humanism and professionalism. However, we are privileged to have with us the Foundation's president and CEO, Dr. Richard Levin, and many members of its staff. They are also joined by Carrie Kravitz, a trustee of Northwell Health, and Lisa Kravitz, a trustee of the Gold Foundation. We also welcome two invited guests of the Gold Foundation, allies in the business world who understand how vital the human connection is, Quest Diagnostics and Becton Dickinson. We welcome Lori Park of Quest Diagnostics and Jennifer Farrington, Becton Dickinson. Welcome. In addition to the white coat ceremony, we also form, are formerly a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society. The Gold Humanism Honor Society is dedicated to recognize, support, and promote the values of humanism and professionalism in medicine. The society is committed to working within and beyond medical education to inspire, nurture, and sustain lifelong advocates and activists for patient-centered medical care. For many years, there was only one recognized honor society in medical school, Alpha Omega Alpha. Now the Gold Humanism Honor Society is also recognized across the nation and highly valued. I'd like to read for you two of our values that form the pillars of our school for the ceremony, and that is humanism and professionalism, two of the 10. First, humanism. We recognize that only through the comprehensive understanding and appreciation of the human condition will we successfully develop and nurture a culture, of community of culture and community of physicians who will care for themselves, their patients, and their colleagues with compassion, tolerance, respect, and empathy. This commitment to a curriculum that recognizes, teaches, and rewards humanism enables us to support a culture and environment truly dedicated to healing and promoting health. Now, professionalism. We are committed to fostering the personal transformation of our students into physicians through a thoughtful and appropriate admissions process, a careful mentoring program, an appropriate reward system, and a curriculum embedded in the student-doctor-patient relationship. We believe that the virtues and behaviors of the good doctor will redefine the personal identity of each student, and we believe that this transformation is a learned, continual process that's, that must be thoughtfully designed, evaluated, and role modeled to be successful. I think the mission of the Gold Foundation is a perfect fit with our values and what we are trying to achieve. So let's finish with the timing of this ceremony. Why did we choose to conduct our white coat ceremony not at the very beginning and days of the curricular year as other schools, but rather at the completion of the first course, CPR, Challenges, Privileges, and Responsibilities? Spent years of planning to ensure that we would do our best to break away from previous molds and traditions in order to construct a developmental learning experience that would embrace learners from the very outset as colleagues and adult learners contributing to a true collaborative learning community from the very outset. So therefore, one could argue that we would begin this journey with the white coat ceremony and cloaking at the outset. However, to emphasize our commitment to the developmental transformation from person to professional, we thought it better suited to occur after the completion of the CPR course, where our students would have experienced 
to a certain degree, the spectrum of the process they would journey through on the way to full transformation. To provide you a short glimpse into the experience to date our students have had, you must realize that already just 10 weeks or so into their year, they have learned and demonstrated the abilities to perform complete histories and physicals, learn scientific principles of disease, have all become certified EMTs licensed by the state of New York, worked ambulance shifts in communities, patients' homes, emergency rooms, and chronic care facilities, seeing the world from the eyes of both caregiver and patient. Beginning that journey to experience and hence understand the human condition and recognizing the transformative process that has already begun as one is entrusted with professional activities usually reserved for more advanced trainees. We firmly believe that the way to enhance and promote this transformation to professional is to treat them as respected colleagues and professionals. So with this immersion, they have already experienced some of the challenges and privileges and responsibilities involved on that personal transformative journey have occurred. Most would argue there is no more challenging career than that of caring for a suffering human being, no greater privilege than serving as one's personal physician entrusted with their, most, their innermost fears and secrets and true needs, and hence no greater responsibility than always needing to live up to the highest standards of the medical profession despite the inevitable stumbles we all encounter along this lifelong journey. We at the Zucker School of Medicine and all our communities and all the people who are here today are here to support you and make sure you know that we believe in you, respect you as our colleagues, believe in this mission and your commitment. And we are confident that you will succeed because we have already seen the beginnings of this transformative journey. Congratulations, welcome, and good luck. All right, so uh, this year we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're gonna bring up everybody in pairs, so it'll make it a little bit more rapid in terms of the throughput, and I'm a radiologist, and we're all about rapid throughput, so uh, it, it's all good. All right, so um, it is my distinct pleasure to present to all of you uh, our class, our entering class of 2017. And we're going to start with Bilal Ahmed and Sasha Alcon. Maya Alexandri and James Alzate. <laughs> Zoheb Baga and Zarina Brun. <laughs> Kitchen Bulsara and Samuel Butensky. <laughs> Christina Castagna and Michael Catalano.
Denny Cha and Kathleen Chang. Christopher Chung and Omoyeni Clement. Now that was a cheer. Cyril Daniel Cuddy and Christy David Romfa. Erica Diane and Holly Dupuy. <laughs> Catherine Ekabachi and Matthew Ehrlich. Madhavan Alangavan and Kate Farber. <laughs> Vasiliki Gliagius and Joshua Glynn. Cassandra Gross and Dylan Gercello. Grace Ha and Rachel Hainline. Julie Hemphill and Peter Shea. <laughs> Wei Wang and Arushi Jahari. <laughs> Amitha Kapur and Chung Young Kim.
Sharon Klein and Shruti Koti. Maribel Lima and William Likas. <laughs> David Lynn and Danielle Yanos. <laughs> Christopher Lucarelli and Tamar Lunzer. Anthony Marciano and Nanette Matos. <laughs> Elliot Melanie and Joseph Moots. Tamara Mavseseva and Nathan Murray. Vincente Negme and Eric Neufeld. <laughs> Terence Eng and Jeffers Wynn. Tommy Wynn and Brian O'Donnell. <laughs> Janae Parrish and Navin Pathak. Robert Penna and Kenneth Pacino. <laughs> Chris
Christopher Peterson and Nicole Quattrochi. John Reed and Matthew Rice. <laughs> Kevin Richardson and Melanie Rivera. Joshua Roberts and William Roberts. <laughs> Melissa Robinson and Andrea Rommel. Daniel Russo and Abel Samanes. <laughs> Benjamin Chaffler and Gilbert Chi. Christopher Shum and David Sloan. <laughs> Danielle Soberman and Rachel Salmanovich. Anoop Santi and Alexander Spring. <laughs> Blaine Stannard and Morgan Staring. Ross Stuber and Rachel Tenenbaum.
Jose Torres and Mika Uffenheimer. Claire Wahlberg and Sarah Wong. <laughs> Tiffany Wang and Zing Yu Wei. Grace Wu and Jeff Yang. <laughs> William Yang and Song Yun. And last but not least, the Zangs, Karina Zang and Henry Zang. Please let's join and applaud the entering class of 2017. You guys look pretty good, I'll tell you. And the coats fit remarkably well. It's a first good sign. So there are two other people here I want to introduce because I think they each represent something special to me. So as I was thinking about this day and, and adding up numbers, uh, I realized that I probably participated in the education of well over 2,000 medical students and well over a thousand residents in my career. Uh, and the person who is sitting on the stage representing both of those, the last chief resident I had before I joined Northwell Health is Dr. Samara Ginsberg. And so Samara, you stand here for all those special people in my life who are the students that I care so much about. And my other great love, is doctors who care so much about the next generation of doctors. And so let me just point out that the other person that I want to specially introduce is a person who loves medicine, loves teachers, has unbelievable resilience and remarkable courage, Dr. Dave Elkowitz.
And now I'll ask all of you, the class, and all the physicians in the audience to stand, and we'll all say the oath together. Together. We're going to say it together. <laughs> It's a long oath. It was modified by the very first class of this medical school, but I think it's an updated version of something very important to all of us. So I swear to f you, together, I, <laughs> I knew you wouldn't get this. You ready? I swear to fulfill to the best of my ability and judgment this covenant. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures that are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I will remember that there is art to medicine as well as science and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. I will not be ashamed to say I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially must I tread with care in matters of life and death and never abuse the power that has been bestowed upon me. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart, a cancerous growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect not only the person, but a family and community. I will prevent disease whenever I can, for prevention is preferable to cure. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings those sound of mind and body, as well as the infirm. I will maintain the health of my own mind, body, and spirit so that I am able to discharge my duties appropriately. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respected while I live, and remembered with affection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. Congratulations, and have a seat. OK, a little housekeeping. Please remember, when exiting, allow all the students to exit first and wait to greet them outside so that we don't have a big log jam. And second, please join all of us at the School of Medicine for a reception and also a brief special presentation, which is a surprise. So we'll see you then. Congratulations. Thank you.